Jesus lives. The Son of God is risen. And that's such good news. It's the reason we're all gathered here today. Um, before we get going, I've got a few announcements. If you turn to the back of your bulletin, I'll just highlight uh, a few things. So one, just wanted to thank those of you who have donated flannel sheets and, and lightweight blankets. The quilters say thank you. Um, and we've got a voters meeting today after service, so I invite you to stick around for that. We've got a potluck too, so even if you don't stay for the voters meeting, stick around, get some food, uh, get to know some of the people here. That'd be great. Um, this Saturday, the 29th, we'll be doing some cleaning at the church, so if you're around and can come help us, we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, also, next Sunday, we'll be collecting our, our mites for Mite Box Sunday. And um, we've got an orphan train um, donation of socks and undies. Coming up, there's some more information there. Uh, the big, big thing is just get it in before May 7th. That's kind of the headline. Um, also, on Tuesdays from 1 to 3, uh, there is a card-making group that is, is going on here. So I invite you to check that out if you like making cards. Um, and next Sunday, there will be a baby shower for uh, Baby World. Just to remind you about that. One other thing, um, I did this get permission from Bob and Joan. If you've been wondering where they've been at, they're not avoiding us. They've just been in the doctor's office a lot. Uh, currently, as I understand it, they've got their... their uh, they have some sort of respiratory sickness or something that they're dealing with. So we'll pray for them um, in the service, but I'd also ask you to keep them in your prayers. Just for about all that they're going through. Um, is there any other announcement that someone's got? Yeah, go ahead. Um, our Busy Hands for Love group, I, I don't know if all of you know what that is, but um, we knit for area charities, knit and crochet. And you've been so good about bringing us leftover yarns or yarns that you might have in your closet. As of present, we're very, very low on yarn. And so I ask for you to dig a little deeper if you've got some yarn that you want to get rid of. Or uh, if you want to just donate to our cause. Um, and we donate once a year around Christmas time. And uh, it really helps out a lot of area charities. So. Thank you. I'll make one, one more uh, note here. So I see we've got some, some visitors. So something that we've been doing in our service is we've just been including a little paragraph of explanation of different parts of the service. So you'll see that on page three. It might look a little uh, unfamiliar compared to another Missouri Senate church that you might go to. Um, but that's all that is. And when we get there, I will just read that for us, and then we'll just continue with the rest of the service. Uh, with that, we'll, we'll get started with our opening hymn. <coughs>
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Perpetual gladness and eternal joys 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated for the readings. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness, and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about thousand souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we read together a verse by verse response to <laughs> Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his spirit to me, therefore, therefore I will call on him as long as, long as I, live. I live. The snares of death <laughs> encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. And then I call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe you when I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Our epistle reading comes from the first Peter, the first chapter. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you are ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. <clears throat> Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. <clears throat> and this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we rise for the all <clears throat> Yeah. 
24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to, to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening. and The day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the help. <clears throat>
risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. In our gospel passage, the resurrected, risen Lord Jesus drew near to two of his disciples on the Emmaus road. But something strange happened. The passage says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Jesus was there. They were his disciples. So they would have known what he looked like and remembered his voice. That somehow God had kept them from recognizing him. Now, this strange thing enabled several other strange things to happen in the passage we just heard. The first strange thing happened as Jesus began to listen to the disciples. Jesus had asked them what it was that they were discussing. And they were shocked that this man didn't know what they were talking about. How, how had Jesus not heard about the great events that had been taking place? As you recall, this was Easter morning, or Easter afternoon. Um, this passage. They had been wondering about Jesus' death and now his apparent resurrection. And what it all meant. They had had great expectations that Jesus would redeem Israel. But although they had heard that the women saw that the tomb was empty and that they'd even seen a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive, it seemed that they didn't quite believe that Jesus was alive. And they didn't know what that would mean for them. What's strange about this is Jesus, who was resurrected from the dead, was there with them. And he was listening to them, and they didn't recognize him. Okay, so not only did Jesus listen to them and they didn't recognize him, then Jesus began to teach them about himself, and they still didn't recognize him. For he began by rebuking them, for not believing the Old Testament. For the Old Testament, the law and the prophets spoke ahead of time how the Christ must suffer and then enter into his glory. In other words, it taught how Jesus would be crucified and then how he would be raised from the dead. It seems they understood that Jesus had died, but they didn't get the second half of it. And then Jesus showed them from all the scriptures everything concerning himself and this reality. And the strange thing is, that even after Jesus taught them this, they still didn't recognize him. Okay, so not only did they not recognize him as Jesus drew near to them and he listened to them and he taught them from God's word, they didn't even recognize him after they invited him to stay with them. They didn't recognize Jesus until he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And then we hear just after that, Jesus vanished. This is a strange reading. And, and then the disciples, they, they take what happened, and they go and tell others, Jesus really is risen. And they, they mention how Jesus made himself known in the breaking of the bread. Now today... None of us is walking the Emmaus Road. We're not going just seven miles to Jerusalem. But we all are on a road that has a destination. And it's our walk of faith. Uh, and it, it may be much longer than just seven miles. It's not even calculated in distance, but more so in time. Our Christian walk lasts either until the day that uh, each of us dies or until Jesus comes back. See, unlike the disciples in our passage who didn't believe in Jesus' resurrection but needed to come to faith, for us, it's a walk of staying in the faith. We already believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. As, as the scriptures tell us, be faithful unto death. For we, are to, we are to stay in this faith and this hope of the resurrection. But just like the disciples did then, we can struggle to recognize Jesus' presence with us as he walks with us from now until the end. For some of this, this happens when we try to recognize Jesus with our eyes. You look around at your life or at the state of Minnesota or at our country or at our world, and you may conclude Jesus must have left us. There's a lot of crazy things going on. But 
if you look at your life and it seems like things are going pretty well, it can seem like Jesus must be with us. Or again, some of us, um, some of us struggle with this when we try to recognize Jesus with our hearts, right? If as long, you know, it doesn't matter what I see with my eyes, as long as I feel Jesus with me, then I know he's with me. But what happens if you're angry with God? Suddenly you feel like Jesus isn't there. Is he not there? If you get frustrated with the Lord, some suffering has happened in your life, or, or you're despairing, you're alone. Is the Lord not with you anymore? There's a problem with both of these ways of trying to recognize Jesus' presence is that they depend on us and our ability to see him. And what's worse is that if we don't know with absolute confidence that Jesus is with us, we don't have confident assurance of his gifts that he won for us on the cross. If Jesus has forsaken us, we can't know that God loves us. If Jesus has abandoned us because of some sin we've done, we don't have the comfort of the gospel and the forgiveness of sins. Just like the disciples on the Emmaus Road, we can even lose our hope and our faith in the Lord. So whether we try to recognize Jesus' presence with us, with our eyes or with our hearts, we can all struggle to be confident that Jesus is, in fact, with us. Here's the good news from uh, this passage for those disciples. Jesus' presence with those disciples did not depend on their ability to recognize him there with them. His presence didn't depend on their eyes being able to recognize him. It didn't depend on their ears being able to remember his voice. It didn't depend on their mind's ability to understand his death and his resurrection and what it all meant. His presence with them didn't depend on their ability to feel him there with them. For although later we, we heard how they connected Jesus' presence and his teaching with this burning that they, they felt in their hearts, this, this feeling only came after God opened their eyes so that they could recognize Jesus. It actually happened after Jesus had vanished, right? So they knew that Jesus was there, um, um, not because of their feelings, not because of their understanding. Um, Jesus' presence was not dependent on them. It's not only that Jesus' presence wasn't dependent on the disciples' ability to recognize him, more than this, their ability to hope in the forgiveness of sins wasn't dependent on them. For Jesus had come to them before they even asked him to come to them. Jesus was already there. Jesus himself drew near to them before they asked. In fact, it was only after Jesus had come alongside them, listened to them, taught them with God's word, revealed himself, right, that they, uh, not, not revealed himself, but all of those other things, Jesus did all of that before they asked him to stay with them. So not only was Jesus' presence with them not dependent on them, and the hope that they had in Jesus wasn't dependent on them, Jesus' presence also brought with him other gifts. If Jesus directed them to God's word, talk about these, what, what Jesus had done. And God worked through this Old Testament word to fill the disciples with hope. Jesus really was the Christ. Jesus really had redeemed Israel. And he'd done it all according to the scriptures, not according to anyone else's ideas. For Jesus came to suffer in the place of sin. Jesus came to die on the cross in the place of sinners. That was the suffering that he came to do. And then he entered into his glory. Jesus raised from the dead for sinners to save them. This is good news for us today as well. See, any time that you thought Jesus wasn't there because of what you saw with your eyes, Jesus was with you. Any time you didn't feel Jesus' presence with you, he was still there. For just as he was present with the disciples before they even recognized him, 
Jesus is present with us, even when we don't recognize him there, whether with our eyes or our hearts. God's word gives us this great confidence that Jesus is with us. For even as Jesus gave the disciples assurance of his work on the cross through God's word in the Old Testament, Jesus gives us great assurance that he is with us through his own work. For as he said, I am with you always, always, even to the end of the earth, to the end of the age, always, not just when you feel like he's there, always, not just when you see his presence, always, that's God's promise to you. Jesus is with you. Again, Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. No sin's too big for the Lord. He is a big Savior, and he saves us from our sins, and he promises to stay with us. No doubts of ours can prevent the promise of God from his word. And this Jesus, who has promised to be with us, comes with his gifts. Jesus didn't die without gain. He didn't raise from the dead without winning wonderful benefits for us. For by his death on the cross, he has won for us the forgiveness of all our sins. And by his life, his resurrection, he has won for us eternal life with him. That's begun in some sense already now, but that will be given to us more fully in his return. All of these gifts God gives to us through his word. And that's enough. But God does even more. And we're, we're reminded of this in the our, our passage we just heard from on the Emmaus Road. God not only forgives our sins and grants us eternal life through his word, and that's enough, it's sufficient by itself, God also gives us Jesus' gifts, the gifts of Jesus' presence through the Lord's Supper. Even as the disciples on the Emmaus Road recognized Jesus as he blessed and broke the bread, so Jesus makes himself known to us, not only in his word today, but in the breaking of the bread. It happens in the Lord's Supper. And again, this is tied to God's word to grant us confidence. For Jesus himself said, this is my body. Take and eat. It's given for you. And then he said, this is my blood. And then he told us the gift that's in it. Shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So too, just as God brings us the gifts from Jesus' death and resurrection through his word, he brings them to us through the Lord's Supper as well. And so through God's word and the Lord's Supper, God grants us great confidence that Jesus is with us today. Therefore, I urge you to be confident that Jesus is with you. You can do this because his presence with you doesn't depend on your ability to recognize him there. It all depends on God's word, which is promised that Jesus is with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We rise and make confession of our, our Christian faith in the words of the truth. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scripture and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Father of the risen Christ, in your Son's appearance to the Emmaus disciples, he expounded the scriptures and revealed himself in the breaking of the bread. Grant us grace that we too may perceive him as our Savior through his word and rejoice to receive him as the bread of life for the salvation of our souls. By the word and sacraments, renew our piety this Easter tide that we may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear my prayer. prayer. Lord of all, your Holy Spirit opens the, the Holy Scriptures to the hearts of your people. Enlighten this congregation by the resurrection life that never fades, that our hearts may burn in faith toward you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, you have poured out your Spirit upon us that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters and grandchildren in it. Bless all parents, that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, stifle the powers of darkness and end the reign of war, violence, and terror. Give leaders who will seek peace and work for the common good. Instill in them a love of righteousness and guide them in the pursuit of justice for all. Bless Joseph, our President, and the Congress of the United States, our Governor, and all state and local officials, and all whom you have given authority. We ask that you would be with all of them and help them to do their duty wisely and well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, those who suffer cry out to you. Hear them and answer them with grace sufficient for all their needs. Remind them how your son Jesus suffered on the cross and how he is with them in their suffering. Heal the sick according to your will. Comfort the wounded and give your peace to the dying. Lord, we lift up especially those near and dear to us in this place. We ask that you would be with the Lords, Millie, Dennis, and Libby, Bonnie, Leah, Stan, Rogetta's nephew, her niece, and her friend, Randy, Roger, and with Bob and John. We ask that you, in your death and resurrection, Jesus, would be with them and provide them all things they need. And according to your will, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your compassion is made known to us through your Son's breaking of the bread. Open our hearts and mouths to receive forgiveness in the body and blood of Christ, who suffered for us and has entered into his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, have mercy on us when we are foolish and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken about your Son. Pour out your Spirit on us through the preaching of the gospel, that the scriptures might be open to us, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we collect the offering. <coughs>
I invite you just to read our communion statement. Um, we do practice something called closed communion. So if, if you're unfamiliar with that, please look at our, our statement. And if you have any questions or want to talk to me about it, you know, just, just come find me. I'd love to talk to you about that. It's not that we don't want other people to commune with us. We want you to commune with us. And we're glad to have you here. But uh, I won't talk about it all right here. So if you decide you're not going to commune with us, I still invite you to come forward, but just, uh, just cross your shoulders like this for me, and I will give you a blessing. So with that, we rise and begin the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Samuel's adore, heaven and earth with all acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord, truly blessed is you, God, in the name. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit. And you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take hey, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith of everlasting life. Depart in his peace.
through body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is truly with us, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated for our closing hymn. <clears throat>
you to stick around for our, our potluck and if we don't know you we'd love to get to know you um, if we know you we'd love to get to know you more so well god bless you in jesus who lives <laughs>